Hey everyone, my name is Sean Rady and I am the owner, operator, and chief pilot here at North Florida Fly School here in Quincy, Florida. And today we're going to be talking about the ever so dreadful topic uh, of the wind triangle and how that relates to dead reckoning and your nav log and just navigation overall. So if we visualize navigation, right, you kind of have a couple different methods. You have pilotage, which is using landmarks on the ground to figure out where you want to go. And then you have dead reckoning, and dead reckoning uses um, calculations, your, your wind correction angle, your, your true course, how fast the wind is blowing, and by using all those variables, it can push out your ground speed and how far you've traveled. And, and that is, in essence, dead reckoning. And so it's kind of complicated, but one thing that we can use for dead reckoning is a wind triangle. So the first step is go ahead and get your paper sectional chart out, or your electronic sectional chart, and figure out where you wanna go. And you're welcome to follow along with me. This is what we're gonna do. So here's my sectional chart. And let me roll forward here on the zoom. Okay, so here it is, a sectional chart. And we are gonna go from 2J9, which is Quincy, Florida. And we're gonna go due east to Baker's Mill. Now, that is exactly 84 nautical miles. And the reason the distance is important is because there's a scale on the bottom of your paper chart that you need to really kind of figure out to follow to know your distance. So go ahead and write that down, distance 84 nautical miles, and we'll go ahead and get started on the whiteboard. So as any good pilot, you always wanna go ahead and get your bearings. So just go ahead and draw a north-south line, all right? Here's your north and here's your south. And in the middle there, we're gonna draw a point and that's Quincy, where we're departing from. And like we said, we want to go from Quincy to Baker's Mill, which is 84 nautical miles. All right. Perfect. So true course is 090. All right. Step one is complete. Good job. You made it this far. Now, what do you think our next step is, right? If we had no wind, we could actually depart Quincy, follow our compass heading of 090, and we would eventually cross over Baker's, Baker's Mill, right? We would eventually cross over our point. And that reminds me, our distance to, to Baker's Mill, distance to destination is 84 nautical miles. Okay? All right, so that's established, right? But Back to my point, there's always going to be wind. You're never going to fly without wind. So our wind situation today happens to be a quite heavy headwind from the northeast. So wind is always reported in the direction that it's coming from. So from 045 at 40 knots. So go ahead and grab your plotter. And let's just mark 045. Let's be, let's, let's be precise, shall we? So we got 90 up top. I'm sorry, uh, 000 up top. And we have 90 over here. So four five is gonna be right about there, all right? And our scale is gonna be a five nautical mile to 10 nautical mile scale, all right? And so here it is, uh, we have zero, five, 10, 15, 20. So for every five nautical miles, it's actually gonna be 10. So five will be 10, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And again, our wind is at 40 knots. So let's line this up, 40 knots, So 20, right? We have a two to one scale. We've lined ourselves up with the angle of the wind and we're gonna draw out 40 knots, okay? So our wind is 045 at 40 knots and it's blowing in this direction, okay? Great job. We got the second leg of our triangle complete and now we're gonna connect this dot or this leg to this leg. But in order to do that, we need to establish what our, what our airspeed is. And by, by looking at the POH, we can establish what the airspeed is here in our little trainer aircraft, the Cessna 150. So this is from the POH, it's a Cessna 150, it's the Mike model, and this is actually our, one of our main trainers here at the school. And so let's figure out what this means. This is a, a cruise performance chart, all right? 
and it presents different pressure altitudes, different RPM settings at different temperatures. So what is our VFR altitude? What could be one of our VFR altitudes if we were going on a 090 heading, all right? Or if we were going east? Well, if you remember, it's anything that's odd, an odd altitude plus 500 feet. So 3,500 feet is probably a reasonable altitude to travel at as we make our ways over to Baker's Mill. So our pressure altitude is anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 on the cruise performance chart. So we'll be looking in this range right here. And the cruise uh, RPM settings for the 150, we like to run at around 2,500 RPMs. And so if you look over, that's a brake horsepower of 65%. Our cruise true airspeed uh, at 96%, and we are burning um, 96 knots, and we are burning 4.9 gallons per hour. So that's important. We come back to our chart, and we know that we're burning, uh, we're running 96 knots. So again, that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 96 is probably right about there. So we're gonna take our point here at the end of our wind and we're gonna take it over to about 96 and we're gonna draw the line. Beautiful. And we'll write 96 knots. Okay, that's our airspeed. So the triangle is complete, and now is where we can derive a lot of information from it. So does anyone know what this is right here? What, what this would be? Give you a chance to think about it. You can pause the video. That information can tell us two things, our ground speed and our distance traveled with that ground speed. So we'll measure that with our plotter. We'll take our plotter, take it up to our departure, and we're looking at it right here. So that's 30, so that's 60 knots, about 65, 67, maybe 68 knots, okay? So that's about right, 68 knots. That's our ground speed. Ground speed equals 68 knots, okay? Um, and that makes sense, right? If we are taking off and flying, we have a headwind, you know, northeast headwind just nailing us. Our true airspeed might be 96, but we're getting, we're going across the ground much slower because of that wind. And we're actually going across the ground at 68 knots. So that's 68 nautical miles per hour. All right. So after we depart, we need to figure out how to crab the aircraft you know, which, which way to crab the aircraft in order to uh, properly fly the compass heading to get to our destination. And so what we're actually trying to find, instead of our crab angle, we call that a wind correction angle. And there's several ways to find that. The easiest way is to grab your plotter and put the center dot right there where the position of the aircraft is and then measure that angle. So that looks to be just under 20. We'll call that 18. So our wind correction angle is 18, 18 degrees. Now, question for you all. Am I gonna correct the heading of the aircraft from our true course of 090, or am I gonna add it to, to, uh, to our true course of 090. Well, let's think about it. We're flying along, wind's hitting us in this direction, right? If we added 18, our wind correction angle, to 090, that would put us at an angle like this, right? And we would be nowhere near our arrival point. It would completely blow us off point. If we subtracted it from our true course, now we're crabbing into the wind and we're gonna be able to fly what we should be flying, our compass heading, and we should be able to adjust for the wind correction. We are adjusting for the wind correction and we'll be able to land 
at our destination and find our destination. So, our true course is zero, nine, zero. Our wing correction angle is gonna be subtracted, minus 18, and that will give us our true heading of 72 degrees, which is this right here. True heading, 72 degrees, okay? So if we departed and we crabbed our aircraft on a 072 heading, that would be the correct wind correction angle, uh, wind correction heading. We also have two other variables to figure out, and that is the magnetic deviation, uh, variation, excuse me, and the compass deviation. Now, magnetic variation is that dashed magenta line on your sectional chart. So go back to your sectional chart, and we will find that line. Let's have the camera focus in. So that is right there. So the five degrees west is the isogonic line. It's that dashed isogonic magenta line. So five degrees west. So if we go back to the board, if you remember in your online ground school, the mnemonic memory aid, west, is best, so we add, east is least, so we subtract. Our magnetic variation is five degrees, it was west, so we add. 77 is now our magnetic course. Lastly, our compass deviation, that's in the airplane, it has a compass deviation card next to your wet compass. The compass deviation car in the 150 is one degree. So we add our compass deviation of one degree for 78. And that gives us our compass heading of 78 degrees. All right, so that's all very useful information. Let's continue to derive a few more items from this. If our distance to destination is 84 nautical miles and we're going across the ground at 68 knots, how long will it take for us to get to our destination? That's pretty simple. So 84 nautical miles divided by 64 nautical miles per hour, and that'll give us approximately 1.2 hours. So that's our time and route. Time and route. Okay. If we wanted to figure out our fuel burn, 1.2 hours, we would go to our POH. And if you recall, our cruise performance chart, it, it told us that we burned at 96 knots, 4.9 gallons per hour at 2,500 RPMs. So at 4.9 gallons per hour, so our fuel burn is 4.9 gallons per hour times 1.2 hours, in theory should give us 8189, nine, and four, eight, eight, one, 5.8, so we should burn roughly 5.9 gallons total to get to Baker's Mill. So we've derived some really you know, important information. We're gonna be in the air for 1.2 hours and we're gonna burn roughly 5.9 gallons of fuel. Now you can get a lot more technical with this because your top of climb is gonna be a little bit more of a fuel burn, right? Because you're using full power to climb up and you'll use charts from your POH to figure out your top of climb and your top of climb will actually be a, a waypoint in your nav chart, which leads us to a great segue, your overall nav chart. That is what you'll be filling out here. So the nav chart is pretty neat, guys. Um, at first it's kind of daunting, but it's really not too bad. Let's just start it here at the top 
if we have a power, our power, remember, is at 65%, and I'll show you again. Our cruise performance chart, the standard temperature, 2,500 RPMs, we go over 65% brake horsepower, all right? 96 knots, 4.9 gallons per hour. So that's what we're gonna fill in up here, 65%, RPM at 2,500. Um, MP is manifold pressure, we, we do not have that. Our, our true airspeed is uh, 69, our gallons per hour is 4.9, so we're, we're working our way right through this all. Our winds aloft is 045 at 40 knots. That's what that says right there. Our fuel on board is 22.5 gallons. That's from the POH. That's your usable fuel in the 150. Departure time, you would put, you know, 9 a.m. And then here is what I'm talking about with the climb, the time and fuel uh, distance right there. So you would put from the POH, how long it would take to climb to 3,500 feet and how much fuel that would burn and how far you would go. That is an exact uh, chart in the POH. From there, you would come over to your checkpoints. So your departure airport would be 2 Juliet 9. And, oh my goodness, what is CH? Well, that's it right there. We just computed it. Now we computed CH for, you know, 2 Juliet 9 going east to Baker's Mill, but and, and so that's what you can put right there, a CH. Um, but your, your next checkpoint wouldn't be Baker's Mill. It would be top of climb. You would put TOC. So most of these, if you're, if you're not changing course, most of the CHs, most of your compass headings will be 078 because you're not, you're not going left or right, of course, right? Um, and then you would just simply fill in the rest. So we have our distance column, our ground speed column, our time column, and we figured out a lot of this stuff. You know, we see that our ground speed is 68 knots. Uh, we see that um, it, our time is 1.2 hours total. So as we go through our waypoints here, you know, our first checkpoint would be top of climb. Let's say that took six minutes. We would put six minutes right in there. And let's say that, you know, burned one gallon of fuel, right? So we'd Put that right there, and then our remaining fuel would be, you know, 21.5 instead of 22.5. Then we get to cruise, right? And we found a landmark on our nav log that we could put down, like a lake or something. And so we'll put that on our checkpoint here, you know, lake so-and-so. And our compass heading, how long it took there, how fast we're going, the time it took to get there, and how much fuel we burned. And so when we're in the cruise portion of flight, we know that we're burning roughly 4.9 gallons per hour and so you could figure out okay well if it took us 30 minutes to get to that lake 4.9 gallons per hour divide that by 2 2.45 gallons to get to that lake and that's how you would figure out all of these metrics for your nav log and that's it you would finally go to top of descent and then you would go to your you know your landing checkpoint so in my nav log you know don't overcomplicate it i probably had the destination or the the departure airport Top of climb, two waypoints, top of descent, and the landing airport. And so then you show up to your DPE or examiner or whoever it may be and explain it. And you say, hey, I, I can do that for you. I can actually show you the wind triangle that I calculated. <laughs> so that's it, guys. I, uh, I hope you got some benefit out of this. Uh, wind triangles are relatively simple once you understand them, but they can be difficult to understand. Uh, <laughs> Once you understand them, but they can be difficult to learn. And so I hope this video made some sense for you. Please comment below if you have any questions. And if you're ever in Quincy or flying over Quincy, please land. We have cheap fuel. Right now, I think we're at 460 a gallon. We're at the beginning of 2024. So thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.